word to wise Grass only greener when it's fertilized Gave them truth in these songs, they prefer the lies That's any beautiful adrift than her purple lies You can't see me, you see me Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie And make it look easy Welcome to the channel. Uh, of course, I'm Ernie Blur Without Fear. I am joined by writer L.L. McKinney. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Anytime. Hey, hey, appreciate you you coming through. Uh, like I said, just uh, for those who are uh, not familiar, uh, L.L. McKinney is a writer who is, uh, if you're not familiar, uh, is the creator of the, of the Nightmare Verse uh you know, you're familiar with uh, books like a blade so black uh that is where you probably have heard the name before they are also right now getting a lot of uh of looks their way because they're also writing an amazing comic by the name of nubia real one and uh also doing work on the uh dc future state uh immortal wonder woman series so can you tell us uh a little bit about how you got into uh into uh this particular uh position uh with nubia because i remember uh and uh you had put a tweet out not too long ago it was uh when you were uh kind of reminiscing back to when you shot your shot uh mm -hmm. talking about nubia tell us how all that came to be yeah uh so i have been a big fan of nubia for mm -hmm. a very very long time mm -hmm. i've been hollering about her for years <laughs> especially wanting to bring her back to the origins of being Diana's equal instead of the random assignments she was given as just, you know, this. And it's really weird to say the phrase ordinary Amazon because <laughs> Amazons are extraordinary. But if you know what I'm saying, like Diana's mm. not an ordinary Amazon. And once upon a time, Nubia wasn't either. Mm. So I've always had that sitting in the back of my mind. Mm. And then one day I tweeted that I wanted to write for Young Justice because mm -hmm. I did, I enjoyed the show. Um, it, this was before like the season three launch back when everybody was yelling about trying to get it back, you know? <laughs> um, so I had tweeted about it and somebody at DC reached out and was like, let's talk. So mm -hmm. I um, talked to them. They walked me through their pitch process for what they were trying to do with these new YA graphic novels mm -hmm. and told me to write a pitch. So I wrote a pitch for Young Justice, but because of my love for Nubia, she was in that pitch. Mm. She was gonna get printed one way or another if I had <laughs> anything to say about it. So I was like, I think I'm being slick. You know, I'm gonna slide <laughs> Nubia in here as a side character and then I'm gradually gonna bump her up to being the main one on the panels by the time we get to the end of it. But um, it, it all culminated in me doing work for the uh, the Nightmare Verse series that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. I go to schools and I talk to kids, you know, it's a thing that you do when you write for kids. And um, we were just talking about geeky stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We were just talking about video games and comic books and heroes. And this kid is his room, you know, black and brown kids. They made a remark along the lines of, it's funny how these heroes can save the world, you know, and stop purse snatchers, but they don't do anything about the stuff that's happening to the black community. You don't mm. see heroes being impacted by that or even acknowledging it. So um, at least not a whole lot, you know? So sure. I, I was like, you, you are absolutely right. Brilliant, brilliant child. Uh, teenagers <laughs> and children in general are just smarter than people give them credit for. So. Mm. My love for Nubia and these kids talking about how they would want to see a hero who understands what they're going through combined when I was called to pitch Young Justice. Because in Young Justice, like in, in Nubia Real One, you know, they go to protest and everything. Well, I had the same thing happening in Young Justice. Mm -hmm. Robin and Superboy and them were about to deal with some stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. So, <laughs> listen, everybody was getting involved, right? Right. So, um, they zeroed in on Nubia and they were like, could you pitch us just her? Like keep everything <laughs> that you're working with, but give us her story. Mm -hmm. And immediately I'm like, say less, 
<laughs> Say less. <laughs> yeah, I will absolutely. I will absolutely pitch you Nubia. So I, I have planned, like I didn't pitch Nubia, but I did pitch mm. Nubia's appearance. And so they just were really into that aspect of it. And I wrote the story. You never know if you'll get another chance to do this, you know, again. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to take a shot at writing a hero, like I said, I'm going to take what these kids said and I'm going I'm to shoot my shot with that. I'm going to do that because mm -hmm. I might not ever get a chance to write heroes again. Lo and behold, I did. <laughs> but at the time, you know, so it, it, it was just all these different things from my life and my experience and talking to these kids and listening, which I think we as adults just need to do more often. Mm -hmm. And here we are with Nubia Real War. <laughs> that is the long winded and involved, <laughs> how did we get here story. But I mean, it, it, I feel like it bears telling though, because uh, this story, uh, you kind of, you were talking about you know, the, the experiences there, like it hit home. Uh, for me personally, because uh, the the instances where uh, you know Nubia is uh, you know she you know, she's sitting on a sidewalk and you know the police the police approach her and she's running you know through her head like the the things that I I feel like uh, all uh, uh, black people and people of color uh, fear when you know the police approach us especially especially in instances where you've done nothing wrong. Yeah. Your, you know, your concern becomes, am I going to make it home safely? What, what's going to happen to me next? Uh, you know, are they going to, are they going to try and shoot me? Like what, like what's like, like what is going to be, uh, you know, the next, you know, thing that's going to happen here. Yeah. And I felt like the, the way that you wrote that and baked it into this story, it, 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 it felt like it, like it just, it just felt like, like a real thing. Like it, it just, I don't know. It just it spoke to me. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. it's very much one of those because I took a lot of my experiences too. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't know anyone who hasn't had an unpleasant run in with the police. Not mm -hmm. in my family. Not in my friends. And they range from, you know, um, that subtle racism where after the fact you're like, did that just happen? Mm -hmm. You know, is that my am I being sensitive or is that my gut? And 99% of the times it's your, your gut is right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was just, again, lived experience, experience from people who I know, and then experiences that these kids have to deal with. Like I had to deal with a lot of the stuff that is happening in Nubia real one, but mm -hmm. school shooting drills was not one of those things, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of the dialogue and the things that these kids say to each other are things that I have heard kids say to each other. Mm. This is stuff like people are like, oh, kids don't talk like that. No, they absolutely do. Right. Because we don't give them a choice as mm. the people who are supposed to be, you know, mature and in control and making the correct decisions in society. We don't give them a choice. And mm. it's so sad. And some of us who are, you know, now coming into this, we weren't given a choice really. So it's just, it's right. handed down again and again. And to deny the truth of how certain communities, how their children are being impacted just does everyone a disservice to the cost of lives, literally. Mm. So. Oh no, that like, I, I'm, that was actually one too that, uh, that had kind of caught me uh, when I was when I was reading the book is uh like when, when you when you get to you know, uh some of those instances like and, and 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 to be fair I mean they're these are instances that these things really happen to people like instances like you know school shootings uh you know, uh you know, women being taken advantage of at parties uh you know all of that stuff like it like it was one it was like it was things like they felt visceral because you know in your heart these are things that this isn't fantasy this isn't like just something that only happens in comic books these are things that actually happen in the real world and uh and and the way that characters uh in this comic uh uh the way they deal uh with these uh scenarios like they they felt like experiences i've heard uh and and seen from other people uh you know like like people being afraid to speak up or say something because they're worried that uh that they're either not going to be believed 
or that uh, it's going to cause more problems for themselves down the road or, uh, you know, situations uh, where, you know, it more specifically with, with Nubia uh, herself is the whole struggle of do I, do I step up and do something? I have the ability. Like, I have the ability to, to make change. I have the ability to, to, to say and do things that can have weight. I have the power to get in here and stop something bad from happening. But the question is, you know, do I, should I, what happens if I do? Like, what are the consequences? And I kind of felt like that was something that, like, I honestly didn't expect that to be such a, a, a major focus uh, of the comic. And it felt, it, it was it was a great, it was something that you don't you don't see a lot of. Well, it probably won't surprise you when I say that my favorite superhero of all time is Spider-Man. And he <laughs> right. has that popular, now made fun of statement that with great power comes great responsibility, mm. which is very, very true, but there are also levels there. There's nuance mm. there that needs to be part. A responsibility to who? Mm -hmm. A responsibility for what? Is it my responsibility as someone who is a victim to mm -hmm. undo what is victimizing me? Is that my responsibility? So it, it's one of those things where, yes, Nubia has literal strength. And, you know, she doesn't know she can do certain things because she's gradually coming into being who she is as a person, which is a thing, you know, teenagers go through. Your body mm -hmm. feels like it's out of control sometimes. You don't know what's going on. Stuff that fit yesterday doesn't fit today. <laughs> You're ripping stuff and tearing. You, did, you honestly don't realize your own strength in some instances. Mm -hmm. So there's this whole idea piggybacking on the responsibility thing where Nubia has literal strength and resilience and stamina. The idea that black girls and black women are strong carries with it this double edged sword where strength is often interpreted as an ability to take punishment. Mm -hmm. So it's, you go from black women are strong to black women can handle this. Black women can take this. Black women can take the punches to the face that maybe somebody else can't. So of course mm -hmm. they need to be on the front lines, which again is just nonsense. That's going to, it gets people hurt and it ends mm -hmm. up perpetuating this idea that black women don't need to be taken care of. Black girls don't need to be taken care of. Black kids don't need to be taken care of. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it, it bleeds into so much else about how, you know, black kids aren't seen as black kids. And that's something that comes up in the book as well mm -hmm. is they don't see you as children mm -hmm. for no other reason, except for the fact that this is your background. This is where you come from. So there's the whole idea of the responsibility that goes with power or strength. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to examine it a little bit deeper as to a responsibility to who and to what and what that responsibility would look like. Mm -hmm. Well, that, I like I say, it, it definitely came across. Uh, it definitely came across. And uh, like it was, it was really like powerful stuff. Like it, like, like as I, like I'm literally as I'm sitting here, like you, yeah, I was sitting there turning every page and just like, the, like a lot of those, a lot of those scenes just like, and, and 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 first off, uh, kudos uh, uh, kudos to Robin Smith too yes. uh, for uh, you know, really bringing in like uh, a vibe uh, with the artwork in this because um, a lot of the instances uh, where yeah you know, like, like it, maybe it might not be the thing everyone talks about but uh, there are some spreads. Uh, in in the comic where you know whether it's you know being any you know, of the the party scene uh you know where uh where newbie is out with her friends you know and, and everything's getting ready to like pop off there and uh at you know, the you know, protests and you know everything's getting ready to pop off over there like I don't know it was just it was really powerful stuff because like if you look in those scenes like it's everything feels like like it, it all it all feels like a real thing like it, yeah. it's like I've seen like I've seen these things I've seen these things happen I've been there. Um, but, uh, more specifically, the characters, even outside of, uh, Nubia herself, like, each of those characters felt like, like, actual, uh, like, actual people. They felt like real, authentic, completely three-dimensional, uh, characters. Like, what was, like, I know, 
I saw you had said something about uh, the character of Quisha, who was inspired um, uh, by your sister. Like, were yes. there any other characters uh, that kind of fell into that same um, into that same area? Yes, and uh, Keisha's not entirely like her mm. name mm -hmm. is my sister's name, but I'll take bits and pieces of people that I know and mm. build new people out of them. Because mm. it's a dangerous thing to base <laughs> characters on people that you know. Mm. Uh, just an aside, like when I first released A Blade So Black, which is the first book in the Nightmare Verse trilogy, um, her dad dies. Like mm -hmm. the very opening of the book is her reacting to her father having mm. just passed. And so I get this phone call from my dad and he's like, so uh, are we good? because you just kill her father off like immediately he's gone and you run that risk when you you know make characters exactly like someone um in every single way mm -hmm. so a lot of characters do like bits and pieces of them do influence all the characters like all of my sisters went into keisha in some way okay. she just got my older sister's name uh <laughs> friends and cousins went into jason you know mm -hmm. And I know people ask, is that an homage to, you know, uh, Jason, Wonder Woman's brother? And I was like, I didn't even think about that. It was literally <laughs> a cousin's name. Like that. <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes it, it's like that, though. Like, like the, the really, fans start like, picking. <laughs> they start finding stuff. I'm like, y'all giving me way more credit. I mean, sure, <laughs> keep calling me brilliant. I'm not going to tell you not to. But that was <laughs> that was a pure coincidence, right? Mm. So um, I, I put pieces of everyone, including myself, you know, mm. into these characters. And I know in conversations with Robin, the way that she designed them, she put her family and friends into the designs as well. And mm. what's funny is in creating, like I didn't describe any of the characters to Robin. Mm. I, I just wrote what they were doing, how they were reacting to each other and the overall vibe of the scene, like the feeling, mm. the atmosphere, because if the characters are doing the actions they're supposed to be doing, but the atmosphere is off, it's still not gonna read right. Mm -hmm. So Robin really performed sorcery, um, the same sorcery that all artists perform, I think, when they're able to just pull what you didn't know you were imagining out of your head and just put it on the page. And that's what she did. Um, so bits and pieces of both of our families went into creating these characters with the exception. I mean, I don't know anyone personally who I put way like Wayland is pretty much every dude I've ever had to fight on Twitter. Like that's <laughs> literally <laughs> what he is. And you know, or at school when I was in college, when I was like every, it's like, you are every just <laughs> yeah. So. I was gonna say I had questions about that too, because uh like when you're first introduced uh uh to Waylon, he seems harmless enough. Like at least the yeah, the first like couple of panels, you seem like, oh he's just he's yeah. nothing. And then like as you go through the story you're like, Oh no, he's a whole problem. Like it escalates. <laughs> and that's that's <laughs> that is that's real life though, mm -hmm. is you know, people who do the things that Wayland do, they pick and choose their victims for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. And it's always, you know, whispers around that person. No one ever doesn't know what's going on. But mm -hmm. you always have the issue of whether or not, like you said, people will be believed or whether or not people will, you know, stand up. Mm -hmm. um, but it it's just, it was literally having to deal with a version of this dude nonstop <laughs> since I ended up like as a child, you go to school and he's there in kindergarten somehow. <laughs> like it, it, it literally from the start, it's, mm -hmm. I don't understand. I mean, I do understand, but I don't at the same time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, Everybody yeah. got pieces except for <laughs> the clear people who like, they just, it. I literally just picked Mm. Part, yeah, it's parts of other people. And if you see yourself in Waylon somehow, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. It, I don't know you. It's not based on you. So 
settle down. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it, Waylon definitely, and you, you, you talk about, you know, people you've dealt with, like, you know, uh, you know, just in, like, uh, on social media and stuff like that, like, uh, like I, I, I've encountered more than my fair share uh, uh, of Waylands. <laughs> so, oh yeah, everybody knows yeah. Waylands. Everybody probably knows two or three Waylands. Yeah. And I was like, this is definitely his. Uh, he looks like a Wayland. That's yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> like, that, like soon as I saw like all the stuff gone, I was just like, I was like, oh yeah, no, he's. Yeah. This, I, I was like. I was like, all right, I, I know this guy. I know who this guy is now. <laughs> uh, we uh, on a well, and to even talk about another uh, uh, another aspect of this is that uh, I actually really uh, appreciated the 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 way a lot of uh, LGBTQIA plus themes uh, were tackled uh, in this comic because in instances where I felt like you know do you know, all right, this thing is this is a part of normal every day you know this person is just human being living their best life you know whatever uh, that's what it felt like you know in parts where it's like oh hey this is something that's gone over here uh you know it's like okay here we're, we're we're dressing it you know uh to the point to let people know okay this is exactly what's going on but this is you know this is normal yeah. Yeah, this is this is normal this isn't you know some you know you know unicorn instance that's happening like this is just normal everyday life like you see it in um in nubia's parents mm -hmm. uh you know you see it in characters uh which by the way one of my favorite characters is is oscar <laughs> so, uh oh, like I love you see oscar it in all so these much. <laughs> like, i love what, oscar so much like what was there what okay so with oscar like what, what was there like was there a decision early on uh, uh, to to set up. Uh, I, I don't, don't want to you know, spoil any of the the proceedings, but <laughs> uh, but w were there any decisions early on uh, with Oscar to to tie that character uh, uh, to Nubia from the jump, or like like how like what was what was the thought? What was the oh, thought yeah. there? Oscar mm -hmm. was Os every character who is named. Mm -hmm. was whole and their part in the story was in place in my head before I started writing. Like mm -hmm. I, he, because again, it's pieces of people that I know and these mm -hmm. people exist and they don't require reasons mm -hmm. to exist. Mm -hmm. They can just be there and be themselves and no one's gonna question it. No one's gonna draw attention to it. You're just allowed. Mm -hmm you're just allowed. So Oscar was there from the start. Um, Oscar was, it was great going over um, his designs and his characterization because he's very much something that I think we need to see more of. Mm -hmm. Like someone who does and says these things and no one like talks about oh you're over here being emotional that makes you somehow mm -hmm. this or that you know what i'm saying or you're dressing like this that clearly means you're this or that you know so it's like no mm -hmm. it's he's oscar can oscar yeah. please just be oscar <laughs> <laughs> like why are yeah. we trying to like just let oscar be oscar and it's mm -hmm. the same with her parents it's the same way. like it's just mm -hmm. All of them, like they're just allowed to be and allowed to exist and allowed to have their cute little moments <laughs> where they're together um, outside of what it means to Nubia's storyline, you right. know, um, because these people are still people and they are the protagonists of their own stories mm -hmm. and you have to treat them as such. If you all, if right. you just treat the person as a side character, then that's where you run into problems. Mm -hmm. Um and I mean, for me, whenever, and this is just whenever I go into to writing a book, no one is ever decidedly one thing or another mm -hmm. because that's not how identity works. Like you can decide for yourself, I'm this, and then five days, five months, five years later, you've shifted on this, you know, to, to another identity that you feel more comfortable with. It's it's entirely arbitrary to have mm. someone on the outside. And yeah, I created these characters, but technically I'm on the outside. On mm. the outside, 
imposing what rigors they think belong to these identities. So mm -hmm. it's, it was always just, these are the characters and they're gonna live their lives and we get to go along for the ride and they have enough nonsense to deal with. This is not one of those things in this mm. instance. So. Well, I, I definitely appreciated it just because, uh, when, uh, when, when Nubia's parents first hit the scene, you first see him, it's like, oh, no, it's, 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 this is a thing. It's just, don't think too hard about it. Like, it's, it's, this is just normal life. When Oscar hits the scene, like, no one's tripping about, uh, you know, no, no one's out here, you know, treating Oscar, you know, less than. You know, everybody's like, no, 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 it's, this is Oscar. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, why, why are y'all tripping? <laughs> like, there was none of that. And I, I, I just, I, I thought it was really cool. I, I just <laughs> thought it was really nice just to see just, yeah, this is, this I'm always thing. somebody who I hate. Well, <laughs> why is the reason this person is this? Yeah. That that is just the rudest <laughs> thing to me. Like I don't. Why are they? Mm. Uh, they are. That's why. That exactly. The whole needing a reason. Just, uh, <laughs> I need you uh, to justify to me why yeah, this that's, person. Yeah, that's that's is... it. It's the justification. It's the I. I you you need reasons why you want to think what? No, no, we're not gonna play that game today. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's no, the I, next house over yeah. don't play the games with them <laughs> I, I, I loved it I loved it now um, with Nubia herself though one of the things I thought was was really cool is that and, and, well, I don't because I don't, I don't, this is a this is a huge reel so I don't want to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very vague <laughs> uh, when I talk about this but uh, for those who are uh, who are fans of the character already and already kind of Nubia has uh, is kind of weird in DC Comics where you're like there's different versions yes. of uh, Nubia. And depending on which one you're talking about, they kind of have different origins. Yep. And you kind of went this one direction where I kind of felt like, I don't, I don't want to say necessarily kind of gave you a little bit of, uh, of the, the, the best of, you know, this one or that one or this one or that one, but... I felt like what you did in regards uh, uh, to the origin really kind of cleaned up <laughs> uh, uh, some of the, uh, the I, uh, some I, I guess some aspects. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, yeah. um, and that's I mean, it's one of the things that you know, just comics in general and just society in general mm -hmm. has to do is every now and then you have to look back and be like, yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't it. That wasn't, that wasn't, <laughs> the move. that wasn't like, and a whole lot of wrong went into making this decision. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna like, people think that responsibility means fault. They are mm -hmm. two different things. Taking responsibility for something doesn't mean it's your fault. No, it's not your fault that such and such made this decision, but it is your responsibility if you're benefiting from the results of that decision to clean it up. Mm, yes. That is how that works. So um, in doing this with Nubia, it's like her origin has merit. Mm -hmm. And there are parts of it where it's like, you know, that whole sign of the times thing. Um, but also sign of the times is a little bit of a weak excuse, but I'm not going to get on that soapbox <laughs> right now. But at the same time, there's a legacy you want to be, you know, as faithful to as possible. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it, it's just one of those things where, again, we're being very, very vague. <laughs> um, yeah. But I've always also said that, you know, the Nubia I write is always going to be a particular Nubia. She's always going to be connected to pre-crisis in some way mm -hmm. because that's the Nubia that I fell in love with and that's Nubia at her strongest, in my opinion. Um, actually, literally, because she does have the exact, you know, the abilities of Wonder Woman and then, you know, a couple extra ones thrown in here and there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, I'm not going to rob her of these abilities and these powers because someone else did A, B, C with the origin when you can easily <laughs> just shift it to D, E, F. Like, mm -hmm. slide it to the left a little bit and we're good mm -hmm. to go. So. 
I appreciate that uh, because okay, so and I, I don't know if I don't know, I don't know how much you can say yay or nay about this part, but um, because of course yeah, we mentioned you know that uh, with you know DC Future State uh, that's going on right now, yeah, uh, we also have the uh, the Immortal Wonder Woman yes uh series is going on right now which uh i guess you, you, you i guess i guess technically counts it counts as like a double issue because you have you have your thing with diana going on here and then you also got a full story that's dedicated to uh yeah. nubia as well now and i guess just just to because i i know how i know how some readers are i know how some fans are <laughs> If it, I don't know if we are allowed to, can we spell it out whether or not this is the same? Uh, is this the same Nubia who we experienced uh, in Nubia Real One, or is this a different version? So uh, technically, future the graphic novels are their own universe, mm -hmm. so she's not going to be the exact same. Okay. Point blank period. Just like because mm -hmm. the Wonder Woman that shows up in Real One is that universe as Wonder Woman. Okay. So it's, they are their same thing. However, as I have said, I will not write a Nubia that is not pre Christ. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. so to me, as I'm writing this character, like there are mentions of it in the story where she's mm -hmm. talking about how, you know, me and my sister ain't talking. She don't mean sister is in Amazon's or sister. No, she means Diana. Mm -hmm. That's the one I grew up with and can't stand <laughs> sometimes. Her. <laughs> like I have sisters and sometimes we don't talk to each other so it and, and then in the cup she you know um it's referred to as a daughter of Hippolyta you, you know mm. so for and I did the same thing when I tweeted about the picture when it first came out back in October that's that's who Nubia is to me and so when mm. I'm writing her that's who she that's who she is mm. she's um, I will, like, there are nods here and there to the other versions of her, of course, because mm. it, it's just fun to do that. Right. It's fun to find it in, 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 um, shows and Easter eggs and stuff like that. Like, um, like one of the things that I loved about, you know, old school, but not old school, the, 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 the it's not even the original, but on TV, Cartoon Network, the mm. original Teen Titans, you never are told directly which Robin this is. Right. <laughs> but there so are soon. clues here and there to tell you which Robin this is, right? <laughs> um, so it's things like that. Where, and plus they, they still included other things from other Robins as nods to the characters, mm -hmm. you know? So it was the same thing for me is giving nods to the people who have written this character before I've written her. But she is going to be Diana's twin. Like that's... Mm. That's where I come from. <laughs> so um, I have no qualms with saying that either because I, I said it before. Um, mm -hmm. I started writing Nubia. If I ever got the chance, this is, she's going to be this and mm -hmm. she will continue to be this. Like you will be hard pressed to get, it would have to be a really, 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 really <laughs> good story reason for me to not write that version of Nubia. Like it, it has to be like some matrix level type stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like you find out that the world, like, cause I mean, twists, few twists have the matrix twist anymore. So it, it would have to be that level of, oh, <laughs> for me like, oh. <laughs> to, to, to not write that version of Nubia. So, I mean, mm. they're both Diana's sister because mm. that's the Nubia I write no matter what like if if tomorrow I was to write her for Batman Brave and the Bold <laughs> she's gonna <laughs> act differently you know because that 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 show has a particular uh tone it has mm. a particular you know age demographic or if if they were to like we want to do a run of if Nubia was around during the TV shows, you know, with Linda Carter, or mm -hmm. maybe even with Adam West during, you know, when they were having that happen, then she's gonna run around being campy fun if she's gonna mm -hmm. be part of the Adam West crowd, you know? So yeah. it's, she's gonna be different versions, but her, or for me, it will always be Diana's sister if I'm part of it. Mm -hmm. And I know like sometimes, uh, you know, even when things are like separate imprints or, 
Uh, you, you have like DC Black Label, Young Animal, and you know, all this other stuff. Uh, I know sometimes when they're in different uh, imprints, sometimes like, no, nah, this isn't canon. But, you know, sometimes those elements kind of seep through Yeah. Uh, regardless. So I, I, I still think it's cool. Because uh, like, to me, like, that's kind of how I, I read it's how I read Nubia oh, yeah. in real one. I was like, I said, I mean, I'm just, I said, I don't know a hundred percent that this is the same character, but I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I was like, I'm just, this is the same character. Like the, the, the way that, you know, you know, she is speaking to people, the way that she, you know, mm. she is caring herself. This to me feels like the same Nubia that I'm also reading over here. Yeah. Uh, uh, in immortal wonder woman. Um, that said, though, I, I did have a quick kind of, you know, uh, piggybacking off of that. Um, now, of course, you know, we know with uh, uh, with DC Future State, they've introduced a lot of uh, a lot of new characters. Uh, they you know, we we've seen uh, we, we now have a Brazilian uh, Wonder Woman in uh, Yara Floor. We've got mm-hmm. you know, Tim Fox. Uh, as the current Batman, we've also got a new, uh, there's a new Flash and all this other stuff. And we know, like, all this stuff is supposed to be, like, you know, way down the road, uh, way down the road stuff. And then, you know, once uh, DC Future Day ends, it's going to kind of, uh, they're going to kind of go back to, uh, I guess, uh, some of the more traditional uh, characters. But those other characters are still going to be around. Yeah. Uh, the, the the question I had is, what, if, I don't know if you could, like, once again, I want to put you in the hot seat. <laughs> what I can uh, say. <laughs> what, um, do you have any plans, uh, for Nubia post, uh, Future State? Like, or is, is there, is there a world where we can potentially see, uh, Nubia getting, uh, her own comic? If I got my way, yes. <laughs> I'm just like, um, I'm not in control of mm. any of that. Like, I, the only thing that I know, and because it's like the way that it works in book publishing is a little bit different than how it works in comics. Mm. So when you talk about or tease things, people are like, oh well, that's because something has happened, and you can't talk about it until it gets officially announced and contracts are signed and blah, 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 which is a lot of the same thing that happens over in comics. Mm -hmm. But in comics, there are so many moving parts to the same story Mm -hmm. that I could be writing what's happening over here and somebody else is writing what's happening over there, but we don't have any connection with each other. So I, I'm I'm writing my part to be fit in like a puzzle piece later, as mm-hmm. opposed to me having control of the overall thing, which is what happens in the books, in my mm-hmm. books. So it's it's really it's it's a different type of storytelling. And um Kind of like how you know TV is different from movies. You can't take a movie and then cut it like just cut it into pieces and call that a TV show. You know, episodic mm-hmm. storytelling is a thing. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I'm always going to say that should the phone ring, I am there to answer it. <laughs> I have ideas for what could happen after this story. Mm-hmm. I, of course, have an entire backlog of things that could lead up to that story. <laughs> um the characters that I chose to include such as Aunt Nancy and Oshun are not there just to be there. <laughs> there mm-hmm. there's a point and a purpose. <laughs> um it's it very much is, you know, there was I I did world building for these 40 pages and it's like uh, what could I include in just these 40 <laughs> pages? So, um I I believe I have enough to fill. Mm-hmm. many more comics um, <laughs> should someone who makes those decisions ever be interested in seeing what that would be like well, yes uh, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just go ahead and, uh, uh, so uh, I, this is a message uh, to my following uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Earth's Mightiest subscribers uh, what I'm going to need y'all to do is I'm going to need y'all to get on Twitter uh instagram facebook uh yo, like i'm just i'm not saying y'all gotta at anybody specifically but i'm just saying if you can in a very nice uh <laughs> in a very nice way you know don't be mean but yeah just say hey can we can we please get a um, get a little more uh newbie around here you know? newbie can, 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 like just, just just a little more because i'm always here i am always here for more nubia mm-hmm. i don't have to be involved it, it's <laughs> not that level of because I, again I, I started out as a fan i, I think right. that's like 
most people who get into this start out as fans, you mm -hmm. know? So I would absolutely love to have more of Nubia, us getting to know Nubia on her own, mm -hmm. you know? And I, of course, I like I said, I wrote the pitch where she was part of Young Justice. So I want to see those team dynamics. Mm -hmm. I, as a fan, I'm like, so um, we got her and then we got the Fox Batman. Somebody figure out how to bring President Superman to somebody <laughs> somewhere, figure it out. And I mean, I even have thoughts on that too. So there's, <laughs> I, listen, if I, if I can get me a black trinity, it's gonna happen. So <laughs> it's gonna happen. Don't test me. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm a fan first and mm. I've always loved these heroes and what the different iteration like there's so much there's a version of everything for like if you don't like what's going on over here just go over there and get you a little something something like that over there like mm -hmm. So what you don't like strawberry ice cream go find vanilla go find butter pecan <laughs> whatever <laughs> don't hate on the strawberries people right. like strawberries let people enjoy strawberries um <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm always here for more of any of like Nubia or uh, the Fox family, you know, becoming like a new dynasty in 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 Gotham with Batman and so forth. And I would love to see that happen with you know uh, Superman as well, because mm -hmm. that's I think that's one of the beauties of comics is you get to go what if right and then spend however many pages exploring that what if maybe it works out maybe it doesn't but <laughs> at least somebody got to do you know the what if mm -hmm. so I, I just i want to see it happen whether i'm involved or not so you actually brought up something that's actually been a popular uh a uh, a popular idea that that comes up on uh, on my channel a lot when people talk about uh the foxes uh, right now with the uh, with the next Batman is like, okay, well, all right, well, you know, when when you know, instead of giving it back to Bruce, can you know, can 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 Luke and and Tim and everybody can they just hold on to it? You know, can they just you know, kind of have you know, Wayne Wayne Enterprises just locked down. <laughs> so so like I mean, just the idea of that, I'm just like, I would I'd be here for that. Here I think it's that. one of the, again, it's one of those things that <laughs> comics is kind of known for especially back in the day the random like we're gonna like it it, it literally some of the the storylines it's like well how do we get it so that you know both lois and lana can run off with clark into the sunset well here we have <laughs> superman blue and superman red uh all right let's go for it and then you know of course it comes up later on and they tweak things as always stuff hardly ever starts out i mean ends up looking like how it started out right but it, somebody somewhere was like what if like half of the superman's girlfriend line is just what ifs and it's some of the <laughs> fun stuff like most ridiculous but most fun stuff like one of my favorites is what if lex luthor married lois lane and i'm like not that that would ever happen <laughs> But since someone thought it through, I'm curious. So you go and you like, and it was just, it's, that's one of the best things about storytelling. And it's mm -hmm. it's why I love comics so much. And um, I mean, at the back of your head, you always know that however many years down the line, it's gonna come back around to being Bruce Clark and Diana. Like you just, that's just, I, ow, as I hit myself on something. <laughs> oh, um, no, don't do that. That's just, you know, the nature of the beast in some cases, you know, mm. sometimes legacies can go off and do, you know, different things in different franchises. Um, but eventually it comes back around to, okay, well now we're starting, you know, ground zero with the originals again and go, um, which again <laughs> just helps lend credence to the whole what if situation. So I, I would love to see, you know, uh, just a uh, years of, maybe this trinity and it could be you know anybody else but like it, this trinity is the main trinity mm -hmm. but you could still have bruce and diana and clark kicking around on mm -hmm. an alternate timeline or an alternate mm -hmm. earth or they're, they're there for that right we have more than Go one flash it. we've had more than one you know uh you know batman i mean it, it could be a thing be a right thing. it's the t <laughs> you know i mean how many Batmans are currently just alive right now in terms of <laughs> actors for the movies? Right. Like there are half a dozen Batmans. Mm -hmm. Half a dozen. So it, it could be the same. It, I mean, and they're all Bruce. 
They're all mm-hmm. different versions of Bruce. So I, there's there's nothing. And I, I always like to say, if I'm just gonna throw because I like throwing Idris Elba out there for everything, you know, James <laughs> Bond or whatever. If yeah. Idris Elba one day is Bruce Wayne, that doesn't take away from the fact that Michael Keaton was Bruce Wayne. Like those right. versions of Bruce Wayne aren't just gonna Thanos <laughs> vanish. Like it's not gonna happen. You're Bruce Wayne, he's safe. <laughs> He's oh, no, safe you, and sound. The world still know? knows about him. It'll be okay. Oh, you didn't know that the, the childhood is ruined. Oh, the way if, 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 if Idris Elba comes in, that means Michael Keaton is erased. He's gone. A Val Kilmer's out of here. <laughs> I'm like, how can you not like legacy heroes, but also be a fan of Power Rangers? <sighs> I mean, that all that does is is your season, whole new team, and go, and no one has a problem with that. Oh yeah, ever. Well, well, it's it's the same thing. Well, sometimes like, people have a problem with it, but we've got. Well, they do, but they, people they, they will get used to new people taking over the mantle if you tell them, <laughs> "Yeah, I understand. You can kick and scream about it, but either don't watch the show or watch the show. We got mm, a show. Let's go." Right. So if you just make that the habit that. Yeah, change is uncomfortable, but we're changing anyway. Right. It'll be okay. You have to embrace go watch it. that other season. If that's your favorite season, go watch your favorite season. Mm-hmm. It, it, it doesn't disappear. It doesn't. The new, the no one's going to come and <laughs> snatch the comics out of your hands and rip them up in front of you. <laughs> I you mean, won't be branded a Bruce Wayne right. sympathizer or something <laughs> like that. It's, 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 it's got to be. No one, no one is mad at you that your favorite Batman is Bruce Wayne. It's okay. Right. Like we wouldn't have Batman period without Bruce Wayne. And we recognize this. Can we move on? Like we all, by this point, by the time anyone's actually able to read and comprehend comics, I think we should all have object permanence by now. Uh, (laughs) You know, we should know that it's not going away. Yeah. yeah. Some people struggle with that. Um, Well, one thing I wanted to ask too is, okay, so because right now, obviously, writing Nubia, mm-hmm. if you could write any other DC Comics character, who would you pick? Yeah, or, or it doesn't have to be a certain particular. It could be a team. Long than limited. Well, I still want to write Young Justice. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy the dynamic those characters have with each other. I wouldn't mind taking a crack at Aqualad. Um, I greatly enjoy Calderon. Um, mm-hmm. And although him in the comics, he's like two people, but one pe- it, it Comics does what comics does. So you're like, <laughs> right. let me figure out which version I'm talking about before I right. like, you have to <laughs> kind of do that. But I mean, Cal, I, I would love to do Calder. Um, I would love to explore Rocket more. Um, Ooh, yes, Rocket yes. is a good one. Like there are staples, right? It's like, of course, Vixen, of course, Bumblebee. <sighs> Um, you know, I, I would love to do somehow a, a, a Vixen Nubia mashup just oh. because you've got how the, the, the pendant for, for Vixen <laughs> came about. Right. But also now you got Aunt Nancy running this club. So it's like <laughs> all the thing, like just the story could be so good. Uh, um, but who else I would, I mean, uh, yeah, I would, and then just general characters. I would love to tackle um, a number of the Robins mm-hmm. from Dick Grayson. All I right. also like uh, Jason is another. Like I, mm-hmm. I really enjoy uh, some of the elements of the Red Hood tale. Um, mm-hmm. I would want to write. I think I would want to write Batman just to be able to write Catwoman and Poison Ivy. And I'm not sick of the Joker, but I would want to do like a version of like a comic version of the Heath Ledger Joker or okay. the, 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 um, the Mark Hamill Joker, you know, yeah. just to see what that would look like. Um, and I know you said if I could do one other, there's no one other. I'm sorry. Uh, I would like to do a run of Justice League Unlimited as a comic if I could. Like I just, I love the characters, and I lo- like they're di- them on their own is mm-hmm. great, but the group dynamics are amazing. Like that's what drew. Like again, my favorite superhero of all time is Spider Man, but mm-hmm. when it comes to picking a team of superheroes, it's gonna be the teams on the DC side every time. Right. Like the Justice League 
and then the Teen Titans, mm-hmm. and 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 then Young Justice. You know, with the, I just there's something about the way those characters get on mm-hmm. that I love it. You know, <laughs> and I see you can see those elements shifting around in comics in general because a lot of those elements from the shows. Mm-hmm or what pop up, even though it's a completely different franchise, completely different characters, the humor and the back and forth and the tension pops up in the MCU. It's one of the reasons why it's so great. Mm-hmm. It, it's, I, I just love the team <laughs> dynamics. So I'm just give me, give me multiples of people. I would love to tackle, you know, uh, Jaan coming to earth and oh. seeing everything that happens you know and it it i i, I don't always want to tie books to you know heavy issues or whatnot because mm. i am a, a, a i always talk about how you know the publishing in general and just entertainment in general has this love affair with the commodification of black pain or any mm. any marginalized groups pain that's the story they like to tell again and again so i personally like you know, adventure stories and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Nubia is the one exception because again, those kids and me thinking this is my only time I would be able to write a superhero. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it would be really interesting to explore, at least in some regard, Jean's choice to come to Earth, see how this world treats people and then decide to live as a Black man. That is a story. I think that would be <laughs> really interesting because people who grow up outside of the culture, when they're presented with, would you swap places? Mm-hmm. It's usually a no. Like I'm, I'm it's, it's right. like you've seen it in in those those seminars, the, the the videos that go back with with that. I forget her name, but it's that elderly uh, white lady who she's teaching this class, and she's like. Would you want to swap? So that means you know what's happening. You know right. it's unfair. Right. So it, I think that would just be really interesting to explore that. Um, mm-hmm. Not saying that, you know, again, that it would be anything like, oh, well, this isn't me saying he shouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. He shouldn't, whatever. You know, it's just, I, I think it would be interesting to, to look at that story and right. see, you know, in seeing what, like, wh- what is it that he sees? How does mm-hmm. he view things versus right. how, you know, things are? Because it, it's, again, it, it harkens to that whole, these things get ignored mm-hmm. by these particular storylines or they're very like high, you know, up here level, general looking over it type situation. Mm-hmm. You, you, they're not down in the nitty gritty half the time. So I, right. I think it would be interesting to explore something like that. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily be the one to write it, <laughs> but I think just stories like that and having, you know, storytellers come in and make those decisions would be, I would be all right. keen, you know, there are however many stories with John this can be one of them. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I just, even if I don't write stories, I, I want stories about these characters. I love these characters, um, which is funny because people are like, oh, you must hate such as, no, I love this character. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. So. Well, you know, it's, it's either a love or hate. Like you, you either, you, you can't, you can't half something. You can't right. be like a, well, no, I, I like this. Or you, you people have the saying where you can only have one yeah you can only you, you can't like you can't like the beatles and you can't like you know you know, the rolling stones at the same time right you, know? you can't like oh, the fact that i'm here yeah. saying Nubia is wonder woman means i hate diana right uh, <laughs> i'm fairly like, certain that i have both of them framed in my living room right now so yeah, right. but no no you have to hate them you have to hate her no, nah, it's, it's it's stupid. I, 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 as as a as a comic book lover and fan, sometimes I think it's always a a good thing to step outside of the, uh, the the fandom and be able yeah. to look at them objectively. Yeah, <laughs> but, I mean, and that that's the thing, right? If I didn't care about it, I wouldn't critique it. Right. 
that which you is a thing to. that people if, if i didn't care about it i would just go about my day there mm. are plenty of things that i don't care about that so no i'm not going to talk about the issues in it because that would require me to engage with it why would right. i engage with something i don't like <laughs> exactly exactly that but they're not they're not they're not grown enough for that conversation yet <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to say personally, I I have enjoyed uh, chopping it up uh, with you about all of this because it's it's for one huge fan of Nubia myself. Uh, a lot of a lot of my followers also huge fans uh, of the character. So this actually meant a great deal, um, and. I just want to say uh, thank you so much for not just only you know taking the time uh, to speak with me, but also for doing what you do, uh, you know, with this story, with this character, uh, the the attention to detail, uh, the love and care that is so obvious uh, it, that 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 has gone into uh, it, into this story, into this character, to 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 give us something that we really haven't gotten uh, mm. uh, before in terms of Nubia. So I just, I, I, I yeah, a, a, a thousand, uh -huh. a thousand thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm just, I, I feel really blessed to be able to be part of this. I never imagined after screaming about Nubia that I would be in any way connected to her coming back into the mainstream. Mm. Um, and I'm really grateful for my team who were willing to do this with me who mm. didn't balk when i said i need a black woman artist um not only to you know to open doors to that are sort of so few available to somebody who right. you know the industry does its best to kind of keep out but also because there are just certain aspects of the story that are going to require an understanding mm. and an attention to particular details like we're not we're, let's not sit here and pretend like everybody's just been dry like drawing and coloring black people correctly for all the time let's no. just let's not do it <laughs> so we're, we're not going to tell ourselves that lie no um, god no <laughs> but also to just understand like to be gentle with the characters in certain situations which as you've seen there are scenes that are very um they can be hard but to have someone who understands how hard it can be to mm -hmm. take care to round off as many of the corners as possible, you know? Right. So it's it's been an honor with Robin and Sarah and the team. And I just, I'm really grateful and I would love to do it again. <laughs> well, I personally hope that you get to. Uh, and, and also what do you say, uh, Nubia, real one. Uh, which I believe is uh, going to be coming out on the twenty. Is it the twenty third? The twenty third. Yes. So, like I said, it's 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 prime. It is amazing. Treat yourself, please. <laughs> Go out, read it, read it twice, read it five times. Tell your friends about it because it's like I'm, I'm telling you right now. As I, just an endorsement, but I was literally sitting on the couch with my wife. We were watching TV. I was reading this. Uh, just in between stuff and i i had a hard time putting it down like i rarely just sit down and just burn through something that quick and i consume this like that so <laughs> i i don't even remember what was happening on my shows uh <laughs> so that that is an endorsement in and of itself yes it is, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> my wife's sitting like baby you missing you missing part of the show like I, I, i'm sorry i'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to get more newbie in my life. Uh, <laughs> but no, make sure you guys go check it out. And uh, remember, like I, uh, like, like I said before, guys, Earth's Mind subscribers, make sure y'all go out. Uh, uh, go and uh, and follow uh, L on uh, social media, which, uh, which by the way, go ahead and plug your uh, social yeah, media. Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, so if you want to get to any of my social media, you could just go to the website, which is llmckinney.com, like it is on the books, only one dot, though. Um, and I think it's the upper right-hand corner now but there's a list of all my online shenanigans i'm primarily on twitter screaming about sailor moon and <laughs> things like that um and you can find me there at l on words and l is spelled like the magazine e-l-l-e -L -L -E, on words i do have a instagram it's ll mckinney under well ll underscore mckinney it's mostly my cat and book covers um <laughs> mostly my cat being rude to me which is what he does 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, like just come, come and we can holler about redemption arcs and Sailor Moon and who would win in a battle between her and Goku and things like that. It would clearly be Sailor Moon. <clears throat> All right, we're gonna move on. So. Uh... <laughs> She said what she said. <laughs> <laughs> y'all y'all know it's true. <laughs> oh. well, like I said, thank you so much. Like I said, this has been so much fun. And uh yeah. like I, I like I said, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing uh seeing you do so much more in comics and, and everywhere really, but I really hope to see uh more of your talent uh showcased you, at DC. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. all right thank y'all so much everybody if you if you like said so once again go check it out nubia real one february 23rd go get it go cop it it is amazing go get just just go get two copies of it if you can and uh i guess i will catch you all next time we are out peace <laughs>